we've been looking at the book of Ephesians and we've been looking at the richness of it and probably wondered why I skipped over verses 1 and 2 uh, and started with verse 3. Well, there's a reason. Uh, let me go back now to verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who were at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ. Paul recognizes that he's been called as an apostle chosen by Christ himself by the will of God and he's writing to those who have already trusted and believed in Jesus as Savior and he says in verse 2 grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you might just say, well, that's just a salutation like dear John. No, it's not. Not at all like it. Uh, first of all, Paul signs his letter at the beginning instead of at the end. He identifies himself at the beginning instead of at the end. Second of all, he acknowledges that he's an apostle, one personally called by Jesus Christ. It happened on the Damascus Road or in the town of Damascus, which is what I prefer to say. And he is recognizing that he's writing to people who have already accepted Christ as Savior. His wish for them is grace and peace that comes only through God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he does in the beginning of this letter is to be sure to tell us the blessings that we have as Christians. That's why I told you to chew a while on verses 3 through 5, uh, because it's almost overwhelming. The blessings that we receive are almost incomprehensible. And as we look at those verses and see that we've received every spiritual blessing and that we are standing before him blameless, not because of our own glory or not because of our own goodness, but because of Jesus dwelling in us. And the fact that he predestined, that is, he chose us and predestined or had foreknowledge that we would be his. Now, I didn't realize it until I did a little bit of additional research reading what John Phillips had to say about this section of scripture. But he reminded me that several commentaries and several Bibles have changed the word here from sons to children. And he reminds me and reminds us that we're not to be children. <laughs> We are sons. That is, when we receive Christ, we have a spiritual maturity. It uh, doesn't mean that we're not going to grow in our maturity in Christ, but the second we become sons, we have a different standing. Now, let's take a look as we continue in verse 6. Uh, well, we need to back up just a little bit. He predestined us as adoption as sons through Christ Jesus to himself, according to the kind intentions of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Now, <laughs> each verse is so filled with terms that we need to understand and that are so comprehensive. Uh, we, we need to understand the glory of his grace. Uh, grace means unmerited favor, nothing we did to deserve it. And grace is one thing. I might show grace to someone who offends me or hurts me or whatever by forgiving them. But it's a measured grace, isn't it? But God's grace is almost beyond our comprehension. We need to understand that in my illustration of forgiving somebody who hurts me or somebody who offends me, that it's a limited grace and it's reluctantly given because I'm a Christian. <laughs> I realize I have to. 
forgive. Uh, that's not at all the kind of grace that God has. But look as we look at verse 6 again and understand that principle. To the, to the praise and glory of his grace, which he freely bestows on us in the beloved. Now, don't miss that in the beloved. Do you remember the phrase that came out of heaven when Jesus was baptized? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He freely bestows his grace upon us in the beloved. When we're in Christ, in him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. There's that word again. Now we looked at it in verse two, grace to you. Then we looked at it again in verse six, where it says that the glory and praise of his grace. And now we find this redemption through the blood of Jesus and the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Now watch, God doesn't mess around when he inspired the scriptures to be written. In verse 8 it says, which he has lavished. <laughs> I have some very cheap cologne called Old Spice. <laughs> Most of you will laugh about that because it's an old man's cologne. But nevertheless, it's inexpensive and I can lavishly splatter it on me. <laughs> I also have some more expensive cologne that my daughter gave me. It's much more expensive than Old Spice, and I have to use it sparingly because I know it's great value and it's great cost. But listen, the great value and great cost of God's grace, he lavishly put upon us in all wisdom and insight. <laughs> now, I told you to chew on verses three through five for a while. <laughs> Now you got to chew on verses six through eight for a while because there's so many incredible words here. Again, let's go back and look at those incredible words. The glory of his grace freely bestowed on the beloved for redemption. Now redemption comes two ways. Redemption can come through power or it can come through purchase. In the case of God, he brings to us redemption through both. He brings it through power because he has the power to forgive sins. But he brings it through purchase because he sent his son Jesus to die. And his blood was the purchase price. So we have both power and purchase and redemption. Forgiveness of our sins according to his riches of grace which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. Right, just look at those words. Incredible, aren't they? His grace freely bestowed because of the beloved for the forgiveness of trespasses, redemption of power and purchase, which he lavished upon us in his wisdom and insight. You get some more verses to chew on. Grace, grace, amazing grace. John Phillips wrote, as I read this section of scripture in his commentary, uh, about a man who always liked to take pictures and put verses or songs with the pictures. He was really incredibly impressed with Niagara Falls and the picture of Niagara Falls, the massive amounts of water coming over the falls, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, year after year, generation after generation. Imagine that much water. It never slows down. It never stops. But that water just keeps coming over those falls in the gigantic amounts. And he could never find the right song 
until he heard a song that D.L. Moody's songster sang. And through that song, it keeps saying, and still more, and still more, and still more, and still more. You know, that is a wonderful, wonderful song to go along with this section of scripture. Blessed with every spiritual blessing predestined, adopted as sons, freely bestowed upon us for the redemption, both purchase and power, the riches of his grace lavished upon us, still more, still more to come, still more to come, still more to come. You could almost camp for days on these eight verses because there's still more to come. That's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.